Organists are required to improvise, to make up music on the spot, either during church services or recitals. The organ is the only instrument where a classical musician needs to have a jazz musician's ability to create music in this way. Different countries have developed this crucial skill into different national schools of improvisation. So for instance, French organists tend to improvise in a fairly distinct modal style on Gregorian chant. I grew up in Germany and was taught how to improvise on chorale melodies in various contrapuntal styles. Because of my passion for English cathedral music, I now live in England and have immersed myself in the styles of various English composers from 1550 to the present. This film will celebrate the English composers I'm so passionate about. People like Tellis, Bird, Purcell, Handel, Stanford and Howells and show how each of them improvised on the organ. In doing so, I want to first explore the subject of improvisation in general and show what makes a good improvisation. A really good improvisation is uh, something with a good sense of structure and a good sense of um, musical development of the, of the material that you hear at, at the opening. So the people in the audience or in your congregation, if you like, if it's a liturgical improvisation, are asking, gosh, is this, a, is this a written composition that I've perhaps not heard before? Um, and if you've even got them asking that question, then I think uh, it's a successful improvisation. I find the, that the way people listen to this music is very different from the way they listen to composed music. They feel part of the creative process and the sometimes quite dissonant language that I might use in improvising seems to be fully accepted by an audience because they know it's being improvised. Whereas if I said, here's something I wrote and, uh, and I'm going to play it to you now, and they hear sort of squeak and rumble and then hard chord in the middle, um, often British audiences in particular will, will fold their arms and, and, and try and close their ears. Improvisation has been described as a sort of illusion because one makes up a piece on the spot which sounds pre-composed. But really what happens is the improviser is remembering phrases, patterns, formulas and then puts them together in a logical sequence. And that procedure can be applied to any kind of style. Improvisation is a kind of mixture between things that you know and things that you add on. Um, usually there's an idea that you have to start with, but then you're finding a way of turning this into a piece. And I think that improvisation, you can't start from nothing. The main difference between composition and improvisation is that the letter isn't written down on paper, at least not entirely. And yet, when improvising in different styles, one isn't just making things up as one goes along. It's about using certain formulas and patterns which one has practiced beforehand and then being able to apply those appropriately. Let me show you how this works. I'm going to play you now a short excerpt of a piece by John Stanley. <laughs> In this excerpt, there are a couple of useful formulas which can be used as building blocks for improvisation. For instance, at the beginning, there is an exciting scalic pattern which sounds like this. You take this 
and then you practice transposing it into different keys, for instance. Also, what Stanley does is he uses embellishments on chord sequences. If I play you just a plain version of the chord progression he uses, it's a circle of fifths. And now let's put Stanley's pattern on top of it. This should give us enough material now for a little improvisation of a prelude in that style. Improvisation is a skill that can be learned and can be practiced. And in the following scenes, I will demonstrate how to improvise in the styles of the main English organ composers. The biggest problem we have is that improvisation by its nature is in the moment. So it's only been really possible to record improvisation during the last 100 years or so. Any improvisation before that has been lost irrecoverably. But if we analyze compositions by individual composers, it is possible to identify certain elements which they would have probably used in their improvisation.